You know, there's this illusionating about the, about the social media. It's like social media has this, like, you know, positive name, but at the end of the day, it's the next way to make money, and it's brands are going to use that social media. They use it now, and, I mean, your, your company also helps them successfully doing so. I think that looking at big business as evil empires is pseudo-naive. I, I, I think sometimes there's abuse that takes place with big businesses, but I also think that there's a lot of good, um, I think that like there's pure water campaigns that are taking place because of huge businesses. It was funny, I, I was at the, the, Bill Clinton, there was this Clinton Global Initiative every year and I was there, and there are these huge companies that are making like massive donations. Um, I mean, look at what, the, what, look what Bill Gates has done with the money that's been earned from Microsoft. Yeah. Billions of dollars going into fund public education systems right now. That, you know, so we can look at the big business as the big bad monster, or you can say, hey, I need help with this project. Let's connect and let's work together on it. You know, I was wondering, was it a part of the plan? I mean, did you know that acting was a step in, in going into business or it just happened? Um, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, my dad's a workaholic. I'm a bit of a workaholic. I, I kind of... There's a lot of downtime on movie sets, and especially when I was making my show, there was a lot of downtime. Um, now my, I, you know, I've done a really good job of just surrounding myself with really talented, skilled people, and so I don't, I don't really credit myself with my business. I think I have really smart people that I, that I work with every single day that are responsible and giving and caring and sharing and but it's like you never cease to surprise people first they thought you were just you know like a, a pretty face and then you went into acting and then after you went into acting you met Demi Moore and they said oh maybe that's for PR and you proved that you have a very stable and long relationship and now you're into business and you're becoming this you know you're on on the verge of becoming a media mogul so so I was thinking it, it has to be more than just good people around you no no <laughs> so you surround yourself with people you admire You'd be shocked how different your life starts to look. You know, because for us, when I look at it, you know, here in Israel, I think, but people in the States also, it's like you are the living American dream because you were just another guy from Iowa, and then you went into that bar that evening and you saw the scout, and then you went to New York and your life changed. And it's, I think, is it easier for people to connect because that's the story? Uh, no. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, you don't see yourself don't, as an American dream? Um, for me, it's a dream. For other people, I think it uh, uh, looks like a lot of luck. And for me, it feels like a lot of luck. And um, what, and something else? Mostly just luck. <laughs> I can't buy that, though. Okay. I have to st <laughs> stay with that. I wanted to, as we are speaking about um, Twitter and so on, then we have followers also. Don't ask me how many because I don't want to be embarrassed, but we have a question for you, if that's okay, from our followers, and I'll let you see if you can answer. Hey Ashton, my name is Yael. I have a quick question for you. As we all know, you have millions of fans on Facebook and Twitter. Now, fans are definitely power. So what I would like to know is how are you going to take this power and generate it into something good? That's a wonderful question, Yael. <laughs> it, your PR is implanted. It's you. you know, it's an original question. Thank you. It's great. Um, um, you know, do fans equate to power? I don't know. You're the powerful ones. I'm, you know. Who's I, the powerful ones? The fans themselves are the powerful ones. Um, they're the voices that count. You know, if it, it's funny. I, I, I have people that send me something, send me things all, all the time. Emails like, tweet this, tweet this, and I'm like. If you don't understand, that's not the ticket. Like me tweeting it, yeah, maybe 100,000 people will connect to it or whatever. But that's not the magic. That's not the, that's not the real thing. If it's really good, you shouldn't even have to ask somebody. You shouldn't even have to ask somebody. You should be able to put it out there and people will just will tweet it. People will just retweet it. People will just connect to it. And so, you know, I, I look at the things that, that people really connect to, and they're usually inspirational in nature. And so I have a lot of projects that I'm, I'm working on now um, 
that I hope people will retweet, but you know, me using what I have, like just me, will only do so much. I think it's everybody else. Uh, you know, from, from fighting malaria to my wife and I have a foundation called the DNA Foundation. If you go to demiandashton.org, uh, you can you can uh, you'll be able to find out more information about it. But but we're trying to fight human trafficking, and every single voice uh, that contributes to that effort uh, helps change it and helps change somebody's life. So, so we've talked a lot about um, about you. Let's talk about us. It's your fourth visit to Israel. What brings you here? What is, um, what is well, I have friends here. Um, Last time I came, my, one of my stepdaughters was here on an archaeological dig uh, for the summer, for school. So I came to visit her. Um, I, heard, I read she came on the bus to meet you? She came on the bus from uh, Haifa. Yeah. And I was in Jerusalem, but she came and met me. And we hung out and had, had, had fun. And uh, You're almost the same. No, she's, she's what? She's, she's, my, she's my middle daughter. She's in college. Um, and, uh, and then another time I came here for... Um, to meet my friend, uh, it was Rosh Hashanah, and so and I'd never experienced a Rosh Hashanah in Israel, so I thought it'd be interesting to come and see what that was about. Is it because of the Kabbalah? Because of your connection to the Kabbalah? One of my best friends is uh, is uh, runs the Kabbalah Center, so I came to visit with him. You know, it's all, almost part of the American dream, the Kabbalah now. You know, <laughs> whoever makes it big in America is also interested in, in Kabbalah, Madonna, and you know, the Donna Karen, and so on. And, 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 oh, I don't know about that. I what did you find in the Kabbalah? Um, I think we're made fun of more than admired, actually, to be quite <laughs> honest, but that's okay. What did I find in it? What do I find interesting? Um, I, you know, the, the greatest thing that I ever read was, um, you know, Hillel said, uh, te you know, somebody asked Hillel if, they, if, if he could teach him the Torah while standing on one foot, and he said, love thy neighbor as thyself, everything, is, everything else is commentary. Now go study. <laughs> and uh, and that's, that's all it is to me. Um, it's it's you know people try to turn it into and twist it into something that is this mysterious unknown thing that uh, only certain people should be studying and that it's this mystic thing and uh, it's really as simple as love thy neighbor as thyself and, uh, and everything else is commentary. You fasted on Yom Kippur, is that true? Yeah. So how does it, how does your family see the the fact that you're to, so to close me to was you? to me was fasting with me. <laughs> no, I know you're she was, but asking about your other family. I mean, your the friends, family, they think it's I, you weird. You know, it's no, because it's not weird. Um, I don't think there's anything strange. I mean, not weird. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's anything weird or strange about it. Um, and and they don't. Is it in any sense? You know, you know it was like Buddhism for for the well, 80s it's interesting. And the 90s so and, I was I, I was raised Roman Catholic, right? And, uh, and, and still connect to so many of the teachings because the first thing that they teach is the golden rule, which is love thy neighbor as thyself, <laughs> right? So, um, you know, and there are all kinds of uh, things with uh, Catholicism that, I, that, you know, like there are certain days where you uh, would only eat fish, right? And there were certain days where you know, there's a, so, uh, you know, it's, I don't think there's anything strange about any of it. Um, how somebody chooses to connect with, uh, with, with something that is spiritually fulfilling, that's theirs, and that's for them to deal with, and that's, mine is personal, it's private, and it's mine. And this also brings it to Israel. Are there any Israelis that you follow on, on Twitter, by the way? Yeah, there's a couple. Um, I met one of them today. Um, and um, I have his name is right here actually. And then there's a girl by the name of Orly that I follow. Orly. Yeah. Wow. There are a lot of Orleys. Now we have to check. He told me at the end of the day, if you'd have to choose, I don't know, holding the statue in the Kodak Theater, or being, you know, the, the media mogul, the people bet that you will become. Which one would you choose? I don't have to choose. <laughs> <laughs> and if you'd have to choose? I don't have to. Why not? You sure you're going to make both? Yeah. You're going to get an Oscar? You sure? I think I can. That's great. Uh, what are you going to do when you grow up, though? I don't want to grow up. <laughs> That's a good point. Ashton Kutcher, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers.
קבלה או לא, אין מה לומר, בחור חדור אמונה, בטח ביכולות של עצמו. עד כאן פגוש את העיתונות, בשבוע הבא נהיה כאן כרגיל בחמש, בינתיים חפשו אותנו בפייסבוק, אנחנו מספקים לכם קריאות מעניינות ותמונות מעניינות. שבוע טוב שיהיה לכם להתראות.